Ladies and gentlemen, it's a common phrase used to greet large audiences of people, much like yourself. But how can three words, and only three words, be entirely oppressive towards a whole group of people? My name is Charlie Hobman, and today it is my aim to shed light on that very question, and many others just like it. From the moment I was born, I was raised as a female. But they got it wrong. I am male, I identify entirely as male, and I've always been male. To most people, this is completely confusing. How is it possible for this person to go from being Samantha Kate Hobman to being Charles Francis Hobman? How is that even possible? The answer is simpler than you'd think. I am female to male transgender. From a young age, I knew I was different. This sounds incredibly cliche, but it's also incredibly accurate. Whilst my sister was inside, playing with dolls, watching High School Musical and trying on my mom's wedding dress, I was outside riding my bike, climbing trees and falling out of the trees, catching lizards and whatever I could get my hands on. More often than not, I would come inside with scratches, bruises, <laughs> grazes, but I didn't care. That's how I was expressing myself, and I was happy to express myself in that way. At this point in time, I had no idea what gender identity or what gender roles were. I didn't know what was masculine and what was feminine. I was just doing what made me happy. Now, I must say at this point that I don't believe that gender roles should be in, like, enforced in, in society. But at that time, what I was doing was considered masculine. And then as I grew up, it got harder. I kept to myself because I felt like I was lying to people by presenting myself as female. When I made friends, I felt like I was keeping my whole life away from them because I wasn't ready to admit to myself or to others who I really was. But things have changed. I came out. I shed that skin and set fire to the facade. I came out and I haven't looked back since. I'm able to stand before you today and say, this is who I am and this is who I'm going to be. This is where I've been, and this is where I'm going to be next. So let's talk about technicalities. First of all, sex, gender identity, and gender expression are three entirely different things that overall make up your identity. Sex is what you hide under your clothes, your private parts. Gender identity is what you identify as. As I've already told you, I identify as male. Gender expression is how you outwardly express your gender. So when, before I came out, um, I was presenting myself as female to people. So people would perceive me as female because I would wear f feminine clothing and I would present myself in a feminine manner. But now I present myself in a masculine manner, therefore making my gender expression masculine. So these th three things come together to make your gender identity. Now there are a few things that we need to talk about. A few things that everyone needs to know regardless of being tr whether you're transgender or not. First of all, transgender people have the right to use whichever bathroom they prefer. There is no law dictating which bathroom we can and cannot use. What do we need to happen? I am afraid of a lot of things. I am afraid of, my, of going to a workplace and being discriminated. I am afraid of telling people who I am. I'm getting better at it, but it's still difficult for me. So how can we spread awareness? How can we make it more possible for people to understand and accept people like me into their community? Because that's what needs to happen. I think a good step towards that is um, appropriate representation in sexual education at schools. Without it, kids won't understand or know what being transgender is. I have come out to so many people who have turned around and said, I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, please explain to me. And I'm happily, I'll happily explain, but it shocks me how so little pe people in this country don't understand it. And the problem isn't within ourselves, it's within the sexual education system. We have the opportunity to teach 
students about who we are and what we stand for. And this doesn't just add towards a, com like a more accepting and peaceful community, but this means that people who are questioning their own gender and their own issues will be able to stand forward and get rid of that uncertain uncertainty that I was missing. I didn't have that opportunity to know what I was what I was feeling. I didn't know what it was called. That uncertainty kept me within my shell and it kept me hiding away from who I am. So with appropriate representation in sexual education classes, people who are questioning their gender can freely think about it because it's something that people should explore. Whether you identify as transgender or not, you should definitely explore your gender and your gender expression. And um, self-discovery is such an important thing that I don't understand why it's not enforced more into a school society. We've come a long way. 50 years ago, I wouldn't be able to be here now. I wouldn't be able to stand in front of you. As a community, we are able to consolidate, form a group, bond together, to get, not just as trans people, but you, and you involved too, us as a community. We are able to come together and fight for what we believe in. We can stand up and say, we exist. We have always existed and we always will exist. And there is no way we can be erased from society. As time put it, we're at the transgender tipping point. We are moving forward and we're doing it for humanity. I want to be able to walk down the street. I want to be able to walk into a men's bathroom without being yelled at. I want equal rights. I do not want to be oppressed. How can we do this if we don't work together? Us trans people are making a lot of noise, which is good. We are telling people, this is who we are. This is who we authentically are, something that we cannot change, something ha that has been wired into our genetics. And that isn't going to change. But what can change is people's outlook on us, people's perspective, people's perspective on gender roles in general. Like it shouldn't be a thing for it to be weird for a, a man to wear a dress. It needs to be something that is cherished and accepted. Because I can tell you from my own personal experience, coming out is really scary. And it can be made a, a lot easier if accurate representation in media existed. The media up until now is mostly comprised for the transgender side of media, is mostly comprised of using transgender people as a satirical device. They think it's funny, using slurs, making it into a joke. But that's not what we're about. We are not here to be laughed at. We are human beings. Like I said earlier, ladies and gentlemen is an oppressive term because gender identity is not a straight line. It's not male and female at either end. It is a whole entire spectrum. There are so many different gender options. Facebook alone offers 71 different gender variants. A couple of them, male, female, genderless, which is where you don't identify as any gender, or gender fluid, where you can transition between both male and female or a third gender. There are many more, but it is something that people need to learn more about in order to understand. It is my goal and I hope you will join me on this journey to keep moving forward. In the past century, we have come so far that it is beyond the point that I'm able to come in front of you and 
list all of the things that have happened that has been good. But I can tell you right now, there is still so much that we can do. So really, the question is, when are you going to do it?